This is Wally and this is Lainey. Very cute puppies. The problem is when the baby gets here, we don't want the two of these to jump up on her. So we would like to have a place to keep them and let them run around and be happy and yet uh, separate them from the baby. So let me show you what today's project is gonna be. I would like to build a gate that would go between this wall here and the cabinet. And that will give the dogs this full space back here with the laundry room and my office and all that. So let me measure between here and here and see what uh, we need to cut. Okay, let me measure out here. Between this wall and over here, I believe we'll get by with 40 inches. So that will be our uh, width here. And these cabinets, I want to come up to just under here. So I come up about an inch, uh, 33 inches. Looks like a good height here. So 40 by 33. Welcome to the wood shop. It's a little breezy right now because I've not finished it. A friend of mine had an old bed frame. Not sure where they got it, but uh, it was made out of this one by six. And so I am going to repurpose this old bed frame for this dog door. So let's measure these out and cut them down to size. I've measured this direction and we've got 39, no, excuse me, 38 and a half. Not quite the 40 I was looking for, but I've still got room in there. Now this way is gonna be the height of the door. And what I'm gonna do here is cut it down to 26 inches uh, on each one and then put a, a cap on the top and bottom of a two by four. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna have this extra room up here that I can put a trim piece to make it that barn door style to give it a little bit more of a, a look there. So let me cut all these down to 26 inch. Uh, and also each one of these boards has an attachment where the bed was put together. So I'm gonna be cutting that out. Uh, of the design here. Now with all my cuts made, I'm going to be using the Craig pocket hole jig to put pocket holes in here. So I'm going to line this up, Ooh, snap it closed, and then use the special bit that comes with the kit here. And thinking I'm just going to do three here. Our dogs are tiny, but if your dogs are bigger, you may want to put more or less. Probably more. I decided that on the two end pieces, I would have the three holes, and then on the middle pieces, I would just do one on the sides. That way it's still strong, but I don't use up all of my screws. If you've never used one of these Craig pocket hole jigs, uh, you can buy them on Amazon. I will put a link in the description that you can uh, check that out. Um, I really have enjoyed these just because it makes that real steep hole there and so the screw is hidden in the board. I'm going to get the rest of these drilled and then we will move on to the next step. I laid out the door one more time and measured and it is 38 and a half inches. So now I'm going to come back here on a 2x4 and mark out 38 and a half inches. I'm going to need two of these cuts. So let me get that done real quick. I forgot to mention, always use safety gear when using saws. Now in order to match the cabinets, or at least come close, I've got a stain here called Ebony 2718. I'm going to be using to make these boards rather dark here. So let's see how that's going to look. 
close to black, but not quite. It's pretty close to the color of our cabinets. I was hoping to make it kind of uh, an extension of the cabinets, so I think this will do it quite nicely. All the boards have been stained now, and I've got them set out. Now I'm going to put the pocket hole screws facing towards the front of the door because when I put the trim on it's going to hide all of those so I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, some one and a quarter inch uh, pocket hole screws in there it's pretty simple to install these you just stick that screw down into the pocket hole and then hold this flush and tight up against the other board and have your drill in the right direction. Now I found that uh, when you first start these it can be a little bit of a trick. So I would use clamps but I don't have them with me right now. So There we go. There's one. I was able to rip down these boards and get one side stained. And then I also cut it down to length here. And I was looking at these and I don't think there's any way I can really use the Craig pocket screws. So I'm just going to use some one and a quarter inch screws here to get these attached to the back boards here. Maybe just uh, one in each to make it consistent. So I'm just going to line it up here and put the first screw in. I think we go down here because that side's got a knot. And that is not good. Let's see, maybe start here. Now I have those two boards installed. Had a little crack down here on this end, but I think it'll be okay. Now for the last finishing touch with the wood, I'm going to make a cross piece in here to uh, just kind of give it that barn door look. So I'm gonna line up where I would like it. And then I'm gonna just put some marks here to help guide my saw. Now I'm gonna use the miter saw to cut these angles off of here. Puppies. You're about to be behind this door and don't even know it. Now that this has been cut down, let's see how close we got to the correct angle. Just a little bit off on one side, but not bad. So just like with the other boards, I'm going to put some screws in here to hold this down. This is just decorative, so it doesn't really matter how tightly it's pushed down. My original intention was to put the dog door on this wall so that it could open this way and attach to this corner here. But there's no stud in this little wall. So I decided to move over here to this wall and it'll be able to swing open like this in here. Um, now to get this attached to the wall, I'm going to be using this board right here and just getting it screwed onto the corner here. And hopefully this will work nicely. So I've pre-drilled some holes into the wood. I can line these up here on this side. Okay, make sure that's nice and straight and level and all that good stuff. There's one. Nice. There's 
something back there that we've hit. Must not have been electrical because I'm still alive, right? I'm putting six screws, so hopefully it's strong enough to hold up this door. I found these dark colored hinges that would be perfect for this. It says that each one can support uh, a working load of 13 pounds, so hopefully we'll be good here. So let me get this lined up along the edge. Right in here. Before I tighten that too much, we get the other side of this hinge started. Okay, we're gonna make sure that it's perfectly straight up and down. I found this PVC pipe down here to use as a spacer to get the door above the ground to the right height. But then I found out that there, there's gonna be a gap over here that the dogs could see out of. And that's going to be an issue because if they can see us moving around, they're going to sit there and scratch at this corner until they destroy it. So I'm going to move these hinges back some, maybe to the back side over here, so that um, there won't be as much of a gap for them to look out of. Okay, now it's just a matter of getting these lined up here and getting the hinges installed. Sure is a dark door. Hope you can see that well enough. So I've got it lined up where I want it here. I'm gonna start getting the screws in. Here's the first one. Nice. Now for the bottom ones. I've got both hinges installed here. You can see how well it swings open. It does quite nicely there. Now the last thing to do before it's complete is to get the uh, locking mechanism installed here. So what I'm thinking is I make a little block of wood to go right in here, and then uh, this piece, oops, this piece right here will go on top of that, and then this slide will go on here so it will be able to lock into place there. And because the molding is down here on the bottom, it's got a little bit more uh, give up here at the top. So maybe I can make it so that it's, uh, it'll give a little snap in and be real tight. Just a couple more things and this dog gate will be done. I'm going to install the locking mechanism right now so that the dogs won't be able to push it open. I'm gonna be using this style latch here. So I'm gonna place it right on the end, make sure it's flush. And then I want to use a drill with a drill bit just to make sure that I uh, pre-drill the holes. Then I'll take the screws that came with this and get them installed here. Now you'll notice that whenever the gate is pushed to the full open position, it wants to kind of swing halfway open and stop. And this is a bit annoying whenever you're trying to walk through with a laundry basket or something. So uh, my original thought was to use a hook and eye to um, keep this open. But then my friend and subscriber, Tallman11282, said, that uh, why not just use magnets to hold this open. So thank you for that awesome idea. That's what I'm gonna do here. So I've got a couple of magnets that I found and I'm gonna just uh, use the hot glue gun to put these into place. I've marked the place here on the wall where I want the first magnet. I've got my hot glue gun here. I'm just gonna put a dab of glue right here in the middle. 
and then stick that onto the wall. Okay, now before I attach the other one, I need to first make sure that the polarity is correct. Because I would hate to put opposing magnets like that one right there would not stick very well. So this side right here needs to go towards the door. I thought that was a brilliant idea. So that magnet there is not huge, but it's just enough that when you touch that, it's going to keep it closed. So, and you can just lightly pull it to close this whenever you need to. So, perfect. Thank you so much for the idea. And it definitely uh, keeps us from having to use a, uh, a clip or uh, some other kind of attachment. So, perfect. The very last thing is to attach something in here so that the latch can um, grab onto. So I'm thinking just a regular piece of 2x4 that will go in here and then the other half of the latch, if you can see that, will go in here and uh, that way yeah, it'll latch in like that and then um, I can stain this to, um, to just match the, the door here. Well, I've been putting off this dog door build for about two weeks, and it's time to get it finished. I've got this little block here, which uh, is just a piece of wood, 2x4, and I've got the locking mechanism up there on the top. It's a little bit loose, uh, so it'll make it easier for that to uh, go in there. Now on the back side, I've just drilled out some holes that these screws will go into. I'm just going to attach this to the wall, and that should... Uh, give the door something to hook up to. To get this piece attached, I believe I'm going to push the lock out and get into the block here. And then I'm just going to position this where I would like it to end up here. Make sure it's still easy to move around. And then I'm going to take my drill here and just get this in. I'm going to back these out just a bit again and reseat them. All right, I think that's going to do it. Freely swings there, and then easy to latch. Nice. And the dog gate is complete. Let's step back here and take a look at what's been finished. So, I installed a board along the wall to support the door and got these nice black hinges installed. They seem to be doing well. Then, of course, we just finished this section over here. Got this locking mechanism. And uh, seems easy enough to lock and unlock. It's in a good position. Uh, we have the magnets down here on the wall and then also on the door. I just super glue them, of course, so fits. And it's just strong enough down there to keep the door closed. So I mean, just a little tap and it comes loose. So, should be good down there. And did have a couple of issues with those pocket screws. I didn't have the wood flat enough, and so there was a little crack back here on uh, the top, but nothing too serious. 
Let's take a look at it from this back side here. So definitely easy enough to get attached. Now I may want to come back and put some kind of little rubber pad down here in this corner so it won't uh, scuff that up or make a loud noise if it gets pushed too hard. But I think that's going to be awesome to keep the dogs from getting into the rest of the house. The dogs stayed back here in the back for the first time last night. One of them loved being back there and one of them hated it. Since uh, Lainey is used to being back there, she was happy to have company. Uh, and Wally, who's used to being on the couch, wanted to die. <laughs> so the dog gate has worked well and I think we're going to be using it quite often. So if you've liked this build, please comment down below. And as always, hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Jumping up and... Gosh.